Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to uh, Thursday's Tech Deep Dive with Zentegra. I'm really pleased to uh, let you know that we have Okta joining us today. And in particular, we have two people from Okta, Jessica Kambly, Solution Engineer, and Joe Kapooch, who is an Alliance uh, Manager from Okta. The focus of today's presentation is really to talk about Customer Identity 101 with Okta. Um, the discussion is going to be led by Jaista, and uh, she's going to start off with some introductory remarks and then go into the presentation. And what I want to point out is, if you have questions, please put them in the chat and we'll get right on them. Um, and with that, um, uh, I think we should probably jump into it. So uh, this is uh, Customer Identity 101 with Okta. Jason uh, Campbell, want to welcome you to our uh, Thursday Tech uh, webinars, and Joe, I'd like to welcome you as well. And Jason, over to you. Thank you, Raj, uh, and it's a pleasure to be here. I'm really looking forward to going through all of the content. Um, my my main agenda for today is going over the Okta portfolio. Uh, but before that, I'm Jason. I work as a solution engineer for Okta. I'm based out of Boston, um, and Zentegra is one of the partners that I cover. Um, Joe, would you like to go over as well? Yes, uh, Joe Capuch. Uh, I'm a regional alliance manager here at Okta, covering some of our partnerships in the east. And one of my focus partners of this year is Integra. And we've seen a lot of growth, and they've been a wonderful partner. And uh, very excited that we got this forum to share how we're better together. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Joe. Um, so for today's session, uh, my overall agenda here is to give you a quick overview on Okta portfolio, which primarily consists of workforce as well as customer identity access management. And then the next session or next part of the session will mainly focus on customer identity uh, cloud, which is where the SIAM piece rolls in. SIAM is the customer identity access management. Uh, and then we have a product Auth0, so we can go over and I can show you a quick 10 minute demo of how you can work through the platform itself. Um, and I would like to make this session as interactive as possible. So if you have any questions throughout the session, feel free to interrupt. Uh, we can definitely go over um, this Q&A open as well. Um, so yeah, feel free to make it more interactive. All right, so before um, jumping into customer identity access management, just who is Okta? Uh, Okta pretty much works in three primary identity use cases. Uh, so these are three different identities where Okta can help you in order to connect technology to people. So the three main uh, use cases for identity are workforce. Workforce is pretty much your internal identity where you have your employees accessing your internal applications to do their day-to-day -day tasks. And those could be like Slack, Salesforce, Box, uh, your HR application of choice. Um, but this is pretty much your internal employees, your, um, your contractors or interns that you have uh, who are accessing all of these internal applications. Then there are two set of different identities which are external. Uh, the external piece is B2C which is business to consumers, which is customers, uh, and then there is partners. Uh, we've come across a lot of scenarios where you have a couple of internal applications which your partners might be accessing as well. So that's pretty much where B2B use case also comes in, where you have other business identities accessing these applications. But in any case, these are the three main identities that we cover. Um, and at the bottom, you can see that those are the three main resources that we support. So in terms of applications, we support SSO and MFA across cloud applications, uh, which are something similar to Salesforce, Slack, Box. We have built-in integrations where you can directly um, go to your Okta integration network, connect to this app in a couple of steps. So you can have Salesforce deployed for your employees within a couple of hours. Um, as well as uh, there is on-premises piece uh, where if you have scenario where you have an application which is not using the, any of the modern authentication. So all of the modern authentications are SAML, OIDC, uh, but let's assume that if there is a scenario where you have an application built in Oracle eSuite uh, or SAP um, or JD Edwards, PeopleSoft, so any of those softwares uh, where those are business critical software. So you do have your day-to-day -day tasks that you do with those. And these legacy op applications are really important for your use case. So in that scenario, you can't abandon those applications, but 
we do support SSO MFA uh, across these applications as well. And then there is infrastructure. So as everyone knows, zero trust is essentially the, the go-do thing for do, or it's pretty much very vital in terms of security, uh, where you trust nothing and then validate and gain trust over the process. So uh, with applications, yes, your employees definitely access applications, but then you also have infrastructure, which you would like to secure across. So uh, in terms of infrastructure, uh, our we do have a, a product in PAM space, which I'll go over on the next slide, but it's mainly for resources such as if you RDP or SSH into a Windows or Linux machine, whether it's on premises or if it's on cloud, like if it's on Azure GCP, uh, you can essentially manage your access, also do role-based access across these. Um, for infrastructure, essentially the main use case is if you have a production server where you have role-based access across this server, uh, where you don't want your testing team to uh, execute something on the server, um, then you can go ahead and manage access across these infrastructure servers as well. Um, besides this, there is API. So web application is pretty straightforward. You go on a mobile app or you pretty much go on a browser and access to different applications and go from there but for apis anything in the back end that needs to be secure as well so we do have public and private apis um, that we typically cover uh, we do not re really replace gateways we actually work in conjunction with the gateways so we also have api management access solution which can help you with that but this is pretty much what octa covers in terms of identity and resources um, let me know if there are any questions. And these are just the solutions aligned with the previous slide. So uh, you have your different identities, which could be in workforce. It's typically internal employees, which is the main use case. But then there are also partners, contractors, as well as privileged users or interns who might need access. And SSO MFA is pretty much you can do it across your cloud apps for on-premises apps, spe specifically where the application is built in SAP or Oracle eSuite, one of the main requirements or one of the use cases that uh, for them is essentially the requirement for cyber insurance, which is you do require MFA. So that's typically when you would go ahead. So single sign-on definitely helps where you can just log on to those application without opening a wideband network uh, or VPN uh, into a, a, a network. But in addition to that, you can just gain access to one specific application that you're looking into, but um, you can also apply smart policies, MFA across those apps. Um, and especially with remote work, it's really important that your on-premises applications are also secure. Um, and then there is API access management, which mainly focuses on APIs. Advanced server access, it's mainly for role-based access across your uh, privileged access environments, such as your production server. And it could be a cloud, it, could be Azure, AWS, or GCP, or it could be an on-premises uh, Oracle server. But this is pretty much the workforce overview um, or the main workforce bread and butter, which is all of the popular solutions that we have. Uh, for our today's session, um, before we jump, in, jump into SIAM, this is uh, something that we are really excited about uh, for our workforce. Uh, if you're familiar with lifecycle management, uh, there is a, this is our entry to identity governance administration space. Uh, so OIG or Okta integration, uh, Okta identity governance is something that is launched this month. Uh, there is an upcoming webinar on 22nd of September. You can sign up for this and there is a demo that that'll be covered as well. But OIG uh, is essentially our entry to IGA space, which is identity governance administration where we can, with our lifecycle management, which is provisioning and deprovisioning users across um, applications, uh, you can go ahead and run certification campaigns. Uh, it also helps you to build better reporting and audit. We know that uh, for exa existing customers, uh, we've had use cases where there were so many up, uh, incoming requests for better audit reports, as well as better reporting in general. So. Uh, this queue basically helps with that. Um, then you can also request for access across Slack and Teams. Uh, those are the two main uh, applications which are uh, leveraged across. You can also review and cert uh, certify. Um, besides this, there are uh, more uh, customized policies that you can set um, and provisioning and fulfilling. So those are the main highlights or main uh, features across for Okta Identity Governance. 
Um, so if you're familiar with lifecycle management, it's pretty much the part of that same uh, SKU um, or the main bundle. Uh, but this is something that is launched this month. Um, so yeah, feel free to go over and review it. Um, all right, are there any questions? Yeah. So just that there is no questions as yet, and that's largely because you're crushing it. So yeah. uh, please carry on. Perfect. All right, so those of you who are new to SIAM uh, or Customer Identity Access Management, uh, it's, it has grown into importance in the last seven to eight years where it has become really vital to, um, and especially because of growing competition, it's really important to provide more customized experience uh, or more customized experience and seamless and secure experiences for your customers. Um, and the main business drivers for SIAM is essentially accelerated speed to market. So. Um, as we know, there is Uber Eats, there is DoorDash, and if you're not happy with Uber Eats um, sort of service that Uber Eats provide, uh, you can directly switch on to um, DoorDash or other 10 apps which are available. Uh, besides this, uh, you also want to have more customized experience. Like, for example, if every morning I order the same exact Starbucks order, uh, you do want that to be ready in the cart and just one click, you should be able to add it to your cart rather than going back in the main menu adding that same order over and over again every day. So that's the main idea behind the customer identity exp uh, uh, identity access management, where you want to provide seamless and secure experiences for your customers. Um, besides this, um, we have had scenarios where you have this patient portal, um, and then there are chances for reports that is under the portal that you might have to access. And for that, even for a single healthcare app, you might end up, end up creating like five profiles where you're logging into one portal for your reports, you're logging into another portal for your medic, uh, for accessing your medication or uh, accessing an appointment to your doctor. So there are different portal port, uh, profiles that you end up creating. Uh, the main idea behind Siam is to have unified or 360 degree view of your customers. So as a user, if there are five services that you access from a specific business, you should be able to only create one profile and access all of those five services depending on your requirement. Uh, but that's one of the key features, centralized user management. Like for example, in some scenarios uh, for Uber Eats, it has happened to me where I have like a Google account but then I also created a, a Facebook account with it. Um, now, all of my uh, uh, all of my rewards or all of my loyalty points were tied, tied to my Google account. It would be great if I could merge them uh, because if there are duplicate accounts tied to the same exact email, there should be a feature to make sure that you can link those accounts and have a single identity created for me as an individual. So that is another use cases where that comes in. Security at scale, um, unlike, workforce um, usually in workforce if you have 500 employees uh, with growth you let's assume that you doubled so it's it's typically like by the end of the year you'll have thousand employees as a something that is, that is still consistent across it's not going in from like 1800 flowers is one of our customers and usually for valentine's day they get crazy number of orders compared to other months when the business is relatively consistent, but then there are certain days where it's like Mother's Day, Father's Day, or Valentine's Day is typically when the load goes high. So you want to be scalable, you want to be available at scale, and then you also care about security at scale. Since on an average, any application that you work with, um, by default, you do provide credit card information as well as your PII information across these applications. So you do care about security when sharing that um, sharing that information with that th these businesses, uh, but you also trust them enough to share it. And you want, do want those thoughtful and customized experience when you share those. Uh, besides this, no matter what type of application uh, that I'm accessing the application from, whether it's from mobile, or if I'm ask, um, accessing the application from a laptop or iPad, I do want the same exact omni-channel experience. Um, besides this, um, how many times have you signed out as guest because just because the sign up process was way too difficult to fill out? Um, so that's another use case where the sign up process sometimes is very tedious and you end up just signing out as guests. Um, but that's pretty much where you're also losing on gaining access to users critical information, uh, because in the future, every uh, every opportunity or every customer that you have, there's always chance for upsell where you can, if there's a new 
coffee coming out for Starbucks. And I've noticed that based on the past trends that usually when there is a new coffee, there are certain customers who always give it a try. So it makes sense to just campaign it for them um, and you can run those email campaigns. So any information that you get across for the customers, it makes sense to use those um, rather than reducing the churnout process. So that's mainly the idea behind the customer identity access management. Um, and that's pretty much uh, where Octus IM as well as uh, Odd Zero, these are, these are the two main tools um, that essentially work across. And they are segregated across different use cases. Uh, but let me know if this so far makes sense. Uh, if any questions, I can definitely go over as well. So Jason, there's no questions, but I just, I am really fascinated by this because I think really, <clears throat> I think what you're showing here is how Okta is trying to simplify, streamline the customer security experience across multiple services that might be offered online mm -hmm. by a particular vendor. And I think uh, really the whole idea is, uh, you know, obviously there's the opportunity for upsell, but you know, if you can just make it simpler, yep. right? Yeah. Uh, and if it's simpler, um, you know, customer retention is higher, repeat business is higher. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 nuanced, but it's uh, it's 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 certainly mm -hmm. uh, kind of a, 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 a you know again a forward thinking offering where you're saying, hey, look, how do we streamline it? How do we make it easier? Yep. And so yep. uh, I think the thinking in that regard is really pretty remarkable. Yep, that's the main idea. We want to keep the passwords to limited. We do want we do not want users to create five different profiles just for accessing five different services from the same exact company, um, and that's the main idea. Uh, but it also helps your devs to focus on your core business features ra rather than focusing on identity access management. So that's that's the main idea idea behind the whole customer identity access management. Very good. Perfect. Um, now these are the three main use cases that you'll come across. Um, this is actually the entire Octa portfolio uh, for Siam, which is customer identity access management. So you have consumer applications. Uh, which is pretty much any application that you look at where people like you and me can sign up is uh, comes under the consumer application where Uber Eats uh, Citizens is also a use case where uh, one of our customer is um, Department of Labor uh, in Kansas City, uh, where one of the things that they were facing was a lot of fraud claims of unemployment during pandemic. Uh, and with this, they were basically uh, able to streamline all of the valid and authentic applications as well as remove the fraud claims across so um, any application that you see across where people like you and me can go ahead and directly sign up is everything comes under the consumer or consumer applications or direct customer access applications where customer pretty much manage their own identities they can directly sign up with either using facebook google or they can directly go ahead and use the sign up process uh, then there is B2B SaaS applications. Uh, these applications are pretty much like Okta as a business where you sell from a business to another business. Um, so we do have use cases for those as well, uh, where Atlassian is one of our uh, use cases where Atlassian sells it to another company, which is very similar uh, in, in terms of business where they want to manage the access across these applications uh, for their employees uh, in order to do their day-to-day -day tasks. Um, then there is external collaborations, external collaborations where Okta product comes in, where we do have use case where if you have workforce where your employees, um, as well as your external identities will ac access the same exact application and generally happens in healthcare hospitals. Uh, it also happens in universities. Um, so there are a couple of universities that we support. There's also bank applications where that happens, where your employees, as well as your external uh, identities manage the same exact or work on the same exact platform, but they do have different rules across that application. So there is admin uh, level rules as well as there is a regular customer who's signing in. Um, and then depending on the customer, there are different services that might be accessible to that customer based on his role or, or based on his uh, signing in information as well as based on his authorization across that application. But these are the three main use cases and we can do a deeper dive into those. Um, but uh, the, for the consumer application, Jersey Mike's is one of the use cases that I would bring up. Um, and the reason for Jersey Mike's is that they had a platform initially. So uh, customer identity has been around for a long time. Um, Odd Zero or Octus IM came in way later. 
So in most scenarios, what they typically care about or they used to care about was, can the user log on to my application? Can the user go ahead and purchase? And can they go ahead and check out the product? That was pretty much the main focus in the past. Uh, but Josie Mike was building more um, like a uh, like a more scalable platform. And one of the things that they figured out was that instead of focusing on creating um, identity access management across the new platform that they're building, they will rather try to outsource that piece. Um, and then on their core business, they will focus on customer loyalty, customer 360 degree view, um, as well as the checkout process, as well as different payment applications that they wanted to add across. Um, and in the past, one of the issues that they were facing was breached passwords. Um, so anytime a customer's password was expe exposed on dark web, um, they wanted the customer to get notified since that was like an added value um, just to reduce the account takeovers that were occurring. Um, for their main business use case, they wanted to deliver this application as soon as possible. So instead of building their own identity access management platform, um, they wanted their team to mainly focus on their core business feature. Um, and then the overall uh, agenda or goal for their organization was to provide better customized experience for their customers, um, better loyalty program uh, assigned to individuals. Um, so account linking was also one of the issues that they were facing where some of the users had Facebook login and Gmail login. So they wanted to link those accounts um, just so that they, they do not have their loyalty points split up that way. Um, and after a certain number of subs, I think you get like a free sub uh, with them. Um, so developer time savings was another um, main um, main goal that they wanted to achieve as an organization. Um, so this is pretty much where um, they reached out for Auth0. Um, and that's pretty much when um, they had, they were expanding to 2000 locations. They had actively 6 million users. Um, their monthly actives was in millions. So um, that that's pretty much, they wanted to make it more scalable as well. So that's pretty much when the odd zero came into this um, and they had a successful deployment with Jersey Mike's. But that that's the business to consumer use case where people like you and me can go ahead and sign up um, and access the application for um, any kind of services that the application provides. Jason, I just wanted to ask a couple of questions if you don't mind, um, yep. because that's that's fascinating. I mean, Jersey Mike's, um, you know, it's not necessarily a big purchase. It's a lot of small purchases mm -hmm. and they're investing or they invested in, in this solution. Once again, just try to streamline uh, mm -hmm. access. And I just want to make a couple of comments. First off, the whole idea of managing points. I mean, people probably don't want to spend a lot of time worrying about their points from Jersey Mike's, mm -hmm. um, you know, unless you order a lot of subs. But if you're doing it across uh, Facebook and other identities where you're look, I, I, I want to just make it convenient. And the Jersey Mike system can say, okay, look, it's traced back to this email. Therefore, points accrue to that email. Well, that's great. That just makes the the, uh, the loyalty program more meaningful, mm -hmm. right? Um, yep. It all, it all adds up. And then the other thing, I just want to make sure I understood what you said. Did you say that Jersey Mike wanted to be able to notify customers if- Yep. If, if their password, password information was appeared reached. on the dark web and they use this solution to do that? Yeah. Yeah. So there is a credential guard that you can leverage, uh, which is an added feature on Auth0 where you can notify your customers if there is um, uh, you, if there is a breached password. It also adds additional security. Um, so if you can get dynamically notified across for any new device, um, if there is a sign-in coming in through those, you can do auto reset, auto uh, MFA reset as well. So yeah, there were a couple of features that that were really helpful for them with the uh, authentication credential guard. But they wanted to add that as a value for their customers. Uh, in addition to that, uh, they didn't want to maintain the overhead of managing their customer identity um, because um, they already had too many features that they had to focus on internally for their business application. So uh, for them, outsourcing this was a lot of cost saving. Wow. Okay, that uh, that really sounds like real value that Jersey Mike saw in this, and uh, yeah, no, that's uh, that's that's fascinating. Yep, and especially with like the uh, account takeovers, their support ticket uh, or their support team was getting a lot of load in terms of like resetting the account because that account was was taken over. Um, so they this with the self service password reset as well as additional authentication security guard uh, helped them with 
not just gain the tr customer's trust back, but also help them to provide more security. And then reduce the support cases that they were facing initially. Seems to make a lot of sense. Perfect. Um, the next one is the SaaS applications. So this is B2B SaaS where Okta sells it to another business, which is exactly like Okta, where you have your employees um, access across these applications. So uh, definitely the federation is one of the key pieces here. So you do want it to be, you can provide the access from ADFS, ADL DAP, or any other uh, cloud identity access management platforms, software that you support. Um, but in addition to that, the, the main goals are still the same. You want faster time to market. You want to save um, the, your dev time and focus on core business features uh, that will actually help the uh, product. Uh, besides this, one of the things that with customer identity access management is um, it's unlike workforce, it's typically just IT team and your probably your um, security team cares about all of these applications being accessed by your employees and they should be accessed securely. There shouldn't be any data breach. Uh, but on customer identity access management, it's not just the IT team or um, your security team involved. It's your main core business. So it's also your product team involved in this, uh, as well as your marketing team, um, as well as digital team, um, if you have um, uh, products that you're digitalizing. So in that, in that, in, in those sense, uh, it makes sense for uh, B2B SaaS applications where if your product team is focusing on certain business features uh, or what to highlight or prioritize on the roadmap, uh, it's really important that the, the data that you gather, uh, you're plugging it to, into um, a data analytics app just to understand which product or feature is heavily used, uh, what is more popular in terms of what are the demographics of your users, um, which country your product is deployed in. Um, also in terms of um, um, the identity access management, there's GDPR for EMEA, there, is, there are separate rules for Canada, uh, as well as for US. Uh, so the, the way the data is managed for users is also critical for uh, those scenarios, as well as for marketing teams, they want to run campaigns across the, based on the data that is gathered. So uh, for SaaS applications as well, the data that you gather, it's really important that you, you can plug in with Siam, you, it's really important that you plug into your analytics tool just to understand uh, or plan your roadmap. So that is also some of the focus with Siam products where it's not just the IT team and your security team, but there are other product teams involved as well. So there is safe from different uh, teams and when it comes to uh, the Siam product that is finalized. Uh, besides this, the compliance is again, really important uh, in addition to uh, security, which is definitely important, but their compliance piece also comes in really important because the employees uh, that who are accessing this could be in EMEA or it could be in Canada or it could be US. So there are different regions that you need to cater to. Um, and Auth0 as well is multi, multi-tenant, multi um, but it also has private uh, tenants that are available that you can, uh, so private cloud is also an option with Auth0. Um, so that's pretty much the use case for the SaaS applications where you sell um, from business to business, uh, where Atlassian or Blackboard is sell to another business where they act, manage the access for their employees. Right. So Jace, there's still no questions, so please carry on. Perfect. Um, the last one here is the external collaboration apps, and this is pretty much the application that I mentioned previously, where if you have a healthcare or university app, uh, where you do have different set of identities accessing, like there could be partners, there could be vendors, there could be doctors or patients on this healthcare app will be accessing. So one of the key things here is the managed account creation. You don't want anyone to come in and sign up. You want an account to be created by a support individual. Uh, besides this, if this doctor decides to leave the organization, the LCM, which is the life cycle management piece where you want him to be uh, deprovisioned or you want to revoke his access from all of the downstream apps the moment he leaves the organization. You don't want him to be accessing patient portals uh, or any of the sensitive data that's around. So um, in this scenario, you have your internal employees and then you also have your external set of identities who are accessing the platform. And this is pretty much where Okta masters and it has mastered over the last 10 years where you can 
manage access, not just for your internal employees, but Okta Siam can also help you to manage your external identities. And the key features here is the lifecycle management, uh, or if you have different two different types of identities that are being managed. So Okta Siam pretty much comes in these specific use cases and McKesson Healthcare or universities, uh, as well as there's, there are ma major regional banks that are um, actually leveraging uh, Okta today. There's JetBlue uh, for travel industry as well, which is a popular use case. But that's um, essentially where you have your employees as well as your external identities accessing the same exact app. But there is role-based access across uh, different um, services that have been provided, um, as well as different levels of authorization across. Um, that's the third use case, and that's actually the final use case for Siam. Um, the next, um, the next slide here just highlights the customer journey. Um, essentially what happens during the whole uh, customer journey. So there's what is expected and what usually the com company expects to happen. So you want your um, sign up process to be frictionless e as easy as possible so that the employee or not the employee, actually the customer really tries to go in and sign up and not check out as guest. But besides that, for a company, it's really important to understand the the centralized view of this user. So have a unified view or 360 degree view of this consumer. Uh, you, you need to make sure that the right products or services are accessible to this customer. So if I'm a prime customer, then only I should have access to the prime um, services that are provided. Uh, besides this, um, you wanna make sure that the login or transactions are risk-based. Like for example, I don't want to um, add a risk or MFA every time I log in. If I'm logging in from the same exact device, um, from the same exact network, from the same exact IP, um, you don't want to trigger MFAs plus signing in process every time. So that's something that you, you want to do, but you also want to provide, um, reduce the account takeover. So that is something that needs to be uh, focused for by the customers. Besides this, there is important that you build a profile for this customer. Um, by default, the profile definitely has your information, but it's really important that you know how to analyze this profile, like where this user is located, um, what are the choices they typically make. You can figure out attributes based on your business and then manage those. So there is something called as progressive profiling, which you probably have seen on apps like Clubhouse, where they ask you questions each time that you log in, like, hey, are you enjoying the application? So it's pretty much like survey, survey that you typically do, uh, but it's uh, we, we also call it progressive profiling, where essentially it asks you questions like which artists you're interested in, or based on the previous um, uh, selection that you heard, these three options might be more suitable for you. So that's basically you want to add value. You also want to deepen the relationship that you have with your customer just to build uh, brand loyalty. Uh, and you want to provide consistent experience across and reduce the churn out process. You want to provide the same exact experience on different devices that you provide the services on or application is supported on. Uh, you don't want to provide like a five services or five options are not available on mobile or a different sort of experience or a different profile comes up on your mobile app. So um, that's the key feature. Uh, the next one, it's a really complicated slide, but I'll make, I'll, I'll definitely simplify this. But this is essentially the authentication pipeline or the authorization pipeline that you typically come across when you log on to an application. As a user, I only see my login page and then I'm directly redirected to my resource that I'm accessing. So for example, if I'm going on Netflix, um, I pretty much just use my login page and Max, I'll have to select a profile if I have multiple profiles added, but then I'm directly added to my a uh, custom profile or my resources that were already existing on Netflix. But what happens in the back end is something that is highlighted. So how Auth0 essentially works in the back end is basically highlighted on this slide. Um, but all you need to know is uh, this is the UX or the login page that you typically come across when you go on a application or you go on uh, any application that you would like to access. Um, depending on your use case, um, as well as it will also do, it does anomaly detection out of the box. So if the IP that you're logging in from or the risk uh, of your login is higher, then it will do a risk assessment based on where you're logging in from. If not, and if you're a good actor or a good customer, then it will directly uh, log in, uh, direct you to the login UX, and then you can go ahead and log in. 
Now the login depends on what type of use case this is. If this is a customer use case, you have your social logins on. If you have a federated identity, if it's like an Atlassian, you typically use your SSO in order to get in. So depending on your federated identity, it will go ahead and connect it to either Google or it'll go ahead and use your um, AD or LDAP or whichever SSO login that you pretty much leverage that's typically leveraged. Uh, besides this, you can have, um, so these are some steps that you can add across during the authentication process that depending on your use case, you can add like pre sign up or post sign up activities. So for example, if you do a pre sign up, like what are your interests, then you can tick those and based off that you can add or gain more information on that profile, you can add that feature across. Besides this, once you have signed up and once you gain, uh, once you actually log in, uh, you can do a lot of operations based on the user's action. So the user's login is one factor, but then there are also risky operations, which, which is another factor. Like for example, if you're working with a patient portal, um, if I notice that this patient is logging in from a new device, and if he's trying to access the uh, his, his patient records, you can then trigger an MFA just because it's a sensitive operation and the risk of this login was higher. Uh, or example, for example, even for a bank, um, if the risk score uh, of which device and which user and which uh, air region that you're typically logging in from is higher, so the context of your login shows higher risk score. And if the operation that you're doing, which is transferring money from account A to account B, um, if that is also higher, you would like to then go ahead and trigger an MFA only for that specific scenario. So the goal for authentication pipeline is to make it easier for your valid customers and then check a back end. And this is dynamic. So all of this authentication pipeline pretty much happens on the go. Um, it, it's not something that is triggered post or so you can do a lot of things during your authentication and authorization process where if you think that this is a risky login or if this is a risky operation, you can trigger an MFA only for that. Um, so yeah, there are different uh, use cases that you can plug in here. Uh, you can gather data uh, and plug into AWS or Splunk uh, where you can analyze the data for your product team or marketing team um, so that they can manage their roadmap or run campaigns across based on the data that is gathered. And it all really depends on your business. But with Auth0, you can customize this whole flow uh, to fit in your needs. If your needs are just authentication and then creating a profile, um, making sure that this is analyzing your uh, data analytics tool of choice, uh, you can then go ahead and just do that setup. But if, for example, if you are gathering risk scores based on the user's identity and the type of operation they're doing, you can definitely put in those checkpoints to customize the entire flow depending on your use case. Uh, but this is actually the end-to-end -end, uh, authentication pipeline with Auth0 and the level of customize. And it's very customizable. So it's not really required that you have to do all of this, but it's really something that you can do and customize it based on your specific requirements. Um, I know I went over um, this authentication pipeline, so I just want to um, pause for two minutes and see if there is any questions or uh, let me know if this so far makes sense. Well, Jason, again, we don't have a lot of questions, but isn't mm -hmm. uh, that I can see, but it's just very, very interesting uh, to see, you know, if I can call it the granularity uh, yep. associated with the, the log on process. And, mm -hmm. and, and presumably, <clears throat> I think what you're articulating here is that there is a lot of capability within the Okta or mm -hmm. with the Auth0 uh, platform to allow you to set up policies that uh, match your requirements. Yep. Um, and it's it's certainly a whole lot more than just basic you know authentication. It is yep. really specific to the service being delivered, the context yep. uh, within, uh, be it user location or device. So mm -hmm. really quite interesting. So <clears throat> everyone's being very quiet there. I think everyone's just amazed. I think that's really what it is. Just so you know. No, perfect. Uh, and you can definitely reach out to us if you have any questions or if you'd like to know more about the product or uh, try out the product. So Auth0 right now is available for um, like the basic access is available for everyone. So you can directly sign up and start the develop basic development if you're, you probably want to try it out. Um, but then there are certain services that you can add on to later on. So 
Uh, with Auth0, very similar to Okta. Okta has their own integration network. Auth0 also has their, it's pretty much vendor neutral. Uh, these are the set of social logins that are supported. There's SSO options here. Uh, you can do pre uh, sign up actions such as like get an email address from Twitter or allow only work emails. So if you don't want Gmail or Yahoo to be in the sign up, then you can go ahead and enable that. So there are rules that you can set up as pre sign up actions, and then you can also do post sign up. Mm -hmm. Yep, I think someone's on mute. Okay, perfect. Um, then there is um. Then there are also my marketplace integrations like identity proofing is something that you can do. So there are built in integrations that you can go ahead and set up for your specific use case. There are developer tools like Splunk, Datadog, uh, where this is like an external marketplace. You can directly go ahead and set it up with uh, Auth0 within the platform itself. So I just wanted to do like a quick five minute demo of Auth0 um, just to show and uh, the product and how it works essentially. Um, so let me know if you you guys can still see my screen. We can still see it. Perfect. All right. So this is actually the the Travel Zero. It's a fictional website. Um, it, this does not exist. It's a fictional company, and the, I'm part of our fictional use case here. But uh, essentially, right now, Travel Zero wants to improve their customer experience. Um, they want to make sure that their customers can not just easily book travel, but have like an easy sign in process, um, as well as an easy sign up process that's available. One of the quick things that I do see here is that they currently do not have any SSO if they want to uh, integrate with any businesses, but they also do not have any uh, easy sign up options like Google or Apple or um, any so social login authentications are not available. So that's one of the key features that I see here. Uh, besides this, there are a couple of other uh, features that you can add as well. Um, and so it, with Auth0, in a couple of minutes, you can uh, connect to that. One of the key differentiators compared to uh, other products is that uh, if, uh, if Travel0 already has a database that they typically connect with, Auth0 can just directly use that database and get connected to that application in a couple of clicks. So for example, there's no migration process. Like for example, if I have a database where I have all of my customers, every time that they log in, I can migrate them to Auth0. I can set up their account. You don't have to change passwords. So that's one of the key features where even if I change the login process, or even if I add another social logins, the migration process will still be easy. Um, and in order to do that, what I'm gonna do is this is a demo platform. I'm just gonna turn on the Auth0 login onto the Travel0 platform here. Um, and I'm gonna just quickly refresh it. Um, and as you can see, now if I click the sign in page, um, it has your, you can do everything from custom uh, branding uh, you can go ahead and add your email address. If you want to enable social login here, um, this is actually the management platform for Auth0. So if you sign up for a demo server, this is actually the tenant that you get access to. Uh, across tenant, you can add multiple applications. Um, you can go ahead and add connections or login from different um social use cases or if you have databases like for example if you want to connect to ldap or um or a database that you have you can directly set up database login connections for like mongodb uh or any database that you have on your use case couch db it also supports api databases so that's also an option there is social logins where you can create a social connection um and then in my use case i'll just go ahead and add google this is pretty much, um, if you have a custom uh, Google account, you can then go ahead and provide that. Uh, but there are different set of permissions that you can assign align with your Google account. Um, but then once you have that connected, the next step here is to make sure that it's available. So if there are multiple applications on your tenant uh, and for Travel Zero corporate website, I do not want to enable Google uh, or Facebook, but for the consumer, I want to enable it. Then you can go ahead and create this right away. Um, and if I go back in the travel zero, you can see that now I should have the Google app option enabled here. Um, so that's in a couple of clicks, you can go ahead and add that. Besides this, um, 
You can also go ahead and do your user roles and management across, but the branding piece is something that is usually uh, easier to show on. So there is universal login um, and universal login helps you to customize this page. Um, so there is no code. Um, there is uh, universal login with, with classic options where you can add your own JavaScript, which will be rendered on your client. Uh, and then there is also embedded. So you can either use our universal login panel or the universal login classic option. That's the other classic login was the another option. Or you can also leverage the APIs and manage the entire login option on your end as well, uh, which is with embedded option. Um, besides this, you can customize the whole flow. So you can edit like the button um, if, you, if you want like the, uh, the fonts in a certain format or the borders. For example, my buttons should be um, the width of the button border, or if you want square rounded and not really rounded, you can switch that as well. Um, you, can ed you can edit all of this uh, directly on the fly here um, and have that implemented across. Um, but in addition to that, the, the marketplace is something that's um, other thing that I would like to add show here quickly but these are different categories uh for the for id proofing itself you can go over these options uh but the, this is pretty much like a plugin option that's available uh where you can put in your api key and get connected with your specific choice of id proofing product or solution that you support uh, but we also have um uh rules and actions Rules and action is pretty much so the in the authentication pipeline, let's assume if you have a use case where you would like to call another API in order to gather like a risk score, or let's assume if the user signs up with just Gmail ID and a clear bid API, clear bid as, is a service that API service, which provides you more information based on like the email provided. And you want to fill out like a user profile. For example, you want to gather like, what's the uh, what's the user's location um any demographic information you can go ahead and add across that profile instead of having user populated every time or fill out like a five page doc clearbit essentially helps you with that so there are different marketing um plugins that you can connect to uh with with this in order to provide more customized experience um but yeah this is pretty much like the odd zero product um this is just a quick overview and just 101 um, and not the entire demo, uh, but this is just something that I wanted to do uh, just so that you get an idea of the product. Um, but any questions or? Well, just that, you know, again, I don't wanna sound like a parrot, but yes, no questions, but uh, okay. yeah. this, so I get to talk then. And and really, I think what, what, what I notice here is um, a very straightforward way to uh, create uh, authentication for cloud-based apps and, and the like. And it seems to be, you know, that you have it set up in such a way that, um, you know, there's templates to follow. It can be done reasonably mm -hmm. quickly. Um, and then of course, you've got a whole network, a constellation of, uh, of, of, of additional partners that can help make it more customized and the like. So it's, um, mm -hmm. it, it's very interesting to see. Yep. Yeah. And there are pre-built rules that you can set up um, and you can enable them or disable them. So rules are pretty much like steps that, so for example, if there is a specific operation, which is, uh, which is sensitive, then you can set up a script for contextual MFA to be triggered only for this specific scenario that, that you're, you would like to integrate with. Um, the other thing is that you can integrate Auth0 with an application that you're starting from day one or you can integrate with an application that is already out there. Um, so as mentioned with connections, you can connect like any database that you have and do like a just in time or dynamic migration. So every time a user logs in, that user will be migrated onto Auth0. But if you have an application uh, that you're planning to build across, you can also do create application. Um, you can just add in the application app. You don't have to worry about the authentication flow. Um, so if it's a single page, you don't have to worry about like the OAuth 2 or uh, OIDC token and how that'll be managed. That'll be auto done for you um, directly. So if you have a single page application uh, or a regular web app, you can select whichever option you have. You have to just type in a name here. And then you can select the technology here. 
uh, depending on. So we do have um, over 60 different uh, um, libraries of us, um, um, languages that we support. So for mobile apps, as well as with um, with web application, with single page application. So uh, we can definitely provide more information across that. But uh, you can pretty much just select the framework that you're working on. Um, and then if you already have the app, this is pretty much like a step-by-step -step flow on how you can integrate Auth0 with your application, existing application. If not, if this is like a new application that you're creating or a sample app, you can pretty much just download the sample and connect it with your GitHub. Um, but this is actually the step-by-step -step on how you can get connected to it. But yeah, this is um, something that um, you can do if you're starting with an application that you're building um, in the future for the future or migrating in the future, um, or if you would like to connect to an existing app, that's always um, uh, an option as well with Auth0. Yeah. I'm loving uh, it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we do um, have, um, if you go on auth0.com, uh, there's also trainings.auth0.com where you can go ahead and get started with an application building itself. Um, and we also have like an updated documentation, uh, which is updated pretty often. So you can also reference that. Uh, there are a lot of blog posts um, as well as YouTube videos, which, which can be helpful essentially to get started. Very good, very good. Perfect. Yeah, so that was just like an overview um, on Auth0 um, and our introduction in the whole cloud identity uh, for customers, um, essentially. Very good. Um, so, Jessa, do you have much more to demo or present, or, or how are we doing? Because I think you've, you've covered. Uh, yeah, I wanted to keep the last 10 minutes um, okay. just in case if you have any QA. Um, but yeah, no, um, I'm actually good, good to go. Okay. Well, that's first off, that's that that's great. And Jess, I really wanted to thank you. I just want to make a few comments on my side, just as, you know, as a partner and working with customers who consistently are looking for, um, you know, MFA uh, and authentication solutions. I think you've really, you know, certainly for me as the sales guy said, hey, look, there's a lot more depth that uh, Okta can offer both for on-prem and in the cloud mm -hmm. to really provide a nuanced, granular way to set up um, authentication. So it really does support your efforts, be it a loyalty program uh, or specific security needs. And it really, I think the depth that you've kind of expressed kind of shows mm -hmm. you the level of customization that's required, I think, for different organizations, like one size does not fit all. Mm -hmm. um, so I found this, you know, tremendously valuable. I also, if I could, and, and I'm not going to, I'm going to kind of put him on the spot, even though I got to be careful because he's my boss. Uh, Moin, Moin Khan has joined us. Moin is our global CTO from uh, from Zintegra, and uh, Moin, I'm just wondering, I, I, and I'm not sure if you're if you're hearing me. I'm hoping you are, but um, you know, it, it it is you know absolutely clear to me that, that, that there's some real depth, real robustness associated with Okta. And I'm just wondering, Moin, did you want to comment on our capabilities with Okta? I know we've been implementing it for. A number of years in the U.S. and we're looking at ramping that up in Canada. But uh, any thoughts there, Moin? Absolutely, and I think uh, this is uh, Okta has been a true uh, digital uh, platform that uh, that gives that uh, single sign-on and um, many other capabilities. Um, Auth0 is something else that we are working with um, a few of our customers uh, integrating with uh, Citrix. Um, uh, so uh, we really feel that uh, Okta has a um, lot of potential, especially if we align this in the storyline of uh, end user computing and um, um, uh, integrating with, uh, with the digital transformation that uh, customers are looking at. Uh, so definitely this is something that I really feel uh, uh, passionate about. And I feel that um, our customers, uh, they see the same value in this product. And uh, we are looking uh, forward to um, uh, working with many customers on um, having this integration in place. Um, and, and one of the, the biggest one that we are working with uh, right now, uh, oil and gas customer who's looking to um, have all their users uh, land on Auth0 and um, that is their first, um, first uh, landing page for them to go in and um, use their uh, portfolio of uh, software that you're using behind the scene. 
uh, mm -hmm. tons of uh, benefit and uh, features that uh, Okta provides and uh, definitely um, worth uh, uh, investing our time and energy in learning and uh, expanding this with other customers across uh, uh, North America. Well, and thank you for providing that perspective. And I think really just based on the diversity of customers that you deal with, uh, not just in North America, but globally, I think you, you know, you're, you're kind of underlining that there's, there's just a lot of robustness and depth here that allows us to, as an integrator, uh, come back to a customer and say, look, you know, if you are looking for specific um, authentication capabilities, by the way, we can do that and we can do more. It's not just a basic, you know, MFA. And, mm -hmm. you know, Jess, that all I can say is by taking us through this, and I know that this was a high level, I think that certainly for us, certainly for me, um, I've, I've come away saying, hey, wait a minute. I think I understand this a bit better. I think I understand um, the granularity that you have that just, you know, frankly is not available in other products. Um, and, and again, in certain cases, very basic MFA and the like is, is just fine. But if people start saying, wait a minute, you're going to have complex relationships with either employees or customers, having a, a, you know, a more robust solution seems to make real sense. And so I want to thank you because I, I'm, I'm walking away with an education here and I really appreciate it. Yep. Thank you. Thank, thank you everyone for joining uh, as well as thank you for Integra for having us and hosting us here. Um, and it was a pleasure to do this. Um, and thank you for everyone's patience throughout the presentation. Jason, with that, I think we're gonna we're gonna wrap up a few minutes early. So uh, thank you, thank you to Joe and and Moin, thank you for jumping on uh, at the end because it always is useful to get that context in terms of what we're doing from an implementation perspective. Folks, I want to remind you that uh, we will continue to have these Tech Thursdays. Um, our uh, our next one is scheduled for October 6th, and it is focusing in on VMware, the workspace everywhere. And with that, I'd like to uh, bid you a, a happy Thursday. Um, I hope you have a pleasant rest of the week. And uh, to the team here, thank you. We really do appreciate uh, you uh, uh, spending this time and and edu giving us this education on the uh, uh, on the real benefits associated with Okta. And so with that, we'll uh, we'll wrap up. And thank you.